welcome. My name is Maria Loftus and I'm an admissions consultant for medical school here at Kaplan. Prior to joining Kaplan, I was the Assistant Dean of Admissions at the University of California, San Diego School of Medicine, and I was there for about 20 years. During that time, I had the great opportunity to represent the Western Medical Schools, that's Colorado West, uh, to the National Committee on Admissions of the Association of American Medical Colleges. And this was a really great opportunity because not only was I representing all of my colleagues and their concerns to our national constituency, but also I got to chair the committee. Uh, and in chairing the committee, I would work with admissions committees across the country on best practices. And while I was there to help them, it really helped me because I got to learn what other schools did. And oftentimes I would learn that they were doing something that I thought was pretty cool and innovative. And, uh, you know, I got to peek behind the cur curtain at their application process and I learned as I did so. Now I get to work with applicants and I get to demystify the application process and share with them that spectrum of what different schools do. And I really enjoy doing that to help people put forth you know, their very best uh, application and um, see them become successful is really very, very rewarding for me. So today we're gonna to be talking about the interview process and sharing some of the types of questions that are uh, presented at a medical school interview and joining me as as my guinea pig you know joining me today is elizabeth bosses elizabeth can you share what you where you who you are and where you're from sure um hi my name is elizabeth bosses and i am a medical student currently but for this interview i'm going to be posing as a medical school interviewee. Great. Well, I certainly appreciate your being here today. So as a preamble before we get started, um, in general, there are three different types of interview questions that could be asked at a traditional interview. And that's what we're um, kind of mimicking today. So the three different types of questions are uh, behavioral questions, so these are going to be questions that start with, tell me about a time. And they're asking the applicant to reflect upon an experience they've had. The second type of question is just a general information question. So it's going to be something general about you and it might be as simple as, tell me about yourself. And then the third type of question is situational. And a situational question is asking you to imagine a certain set of facts and to respond to them. For those of you that are interviewing in an MMI uh, in the future, which is the multiple mini interview, that type of interview really is largely, largely a mashup between the behavioral and the situational in that the prompt is a situational, but you have to refer to and speak out loud to your interviewer about past experiences that you've had that help inform you as to how you would deal with this situation. Today we're doing a traditional interview and in a traditional interview, the situational question is much more straightforward. You, you wouldn't so much elaborate on your past experiences as you would just be telling the interviewer how you would respond to this situation. So we're gonna be covering all three types today. So to begin, are you ready? Let's do it. Okay. So Elizabeth, tell me what your greatest weakness is. Gosh, what a hard question. So I would say that my greatest weakness is that I tend to get very caught up in how I'm gonna do something. I kind of am, you know, the, you know, letting the perfect be the enemy of the good, I think is kind of my biggest problem. I analyze, 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 and it takes me a while to actually get things started. Um, you know, when it comes to studying, that can mean, you know, spending three days coming up with the perfect study plan before I actually dive into anything. Um, 
I think it's probably the most relevant example that I have, but yeah. So something I'm trying to work on for sure. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. So imagine that you're the Surgeon General. What three things would you change about our healthcare system? Oh gosh. So um, I think the first thing that I would change is the coverage issue, I think is the biggest problem that we have as a nation and as a society that health insurance is unbelievably expensive and a lot of people can't afford to be covered in a way that's adequate. Um, that kind of leads into the second problem, which is a disproportionate rewarding of specialized care over primary care. Um, there isn't enough incentive on physicians, fin financial incentive mostly, um, to go into primary care in most circumstances. And there also isn't a whole lot of incentive for individuals to actually see their primary care physicians and undergo some preventative medicine um, while they, because they're gonna be paying for deductibles, right? Because there's a cost associated with that. So it's a lot easier to wait for the emergency to happen. That obviously has a lot of ripple down costs. Um, and then the other thing, and probably the, the hardest one to fix, is this kind of broader realization of what makes up you know, medical care, what makes up healthcare. So I'm a really big believer in the fact that, you know, social services and housing services and food services all kind of need to be integrated in order to make a healthier healthcare system and a healthier society. Um, and I think we're unfortunately a little far from, from integration on a um, kind of department-wide level nationally to make that happen. Thank you. And lastly, Tell me about a time that you've had a substantive interaction with someone with whom you did not share a common language. Hmm. Okay, so um, my family is originally from Greece. Um, and in 2015, when the, um, the Syrian refugee crisis hit Greece pretty hard, um, I went with a lot of people from my school and, um, you know, friends and cousins of mine from Greece. Um, we went to the island of um, Mytilini and we tried to be as helpful as we could. Um, I think, unfortunately, we kind of overestimated how much we were going to be able to help at that stage. Um, so a lot of the people that were there were not able to speak either Greek or neither Greek nor English, um, which was definitely challenging. Um, I would say the most kind of prominent language at the time was Arabic, um, which I don't speak at all. Um, and I think the, the, the kind of situation that sticks out most for me is a mom who had come, had like made it to the island with her child, but who had lost her child temporarily, um, just like in the kind of camp and in the crowd of people that were there. And she she wasn't even talking to me, but you could just see her kind of running around looking for her child and screaming his name. Um, and to think like to kind of make it that far and to have seen so much and then to, you know, be worried about losing your kid, you know, like within like, you know, a 20 feet radius of you, um, that kind of anxiety in her eyes really stuck with me. Um, yeah. Thank you. So now let's talk about why a medical school would, ask these different types of questions. So the first question that I asked fell into that general, uh, general type of question. Tell me about you. In this case, it was tell me about your greatest weakness. And the reason we ask these general questions is we are asking you to be self-reflective. Um, you know, the question might be, why are you interested in our school? or what is your greatest weakness, or why should we accept you over someone else? But it's asking you to be self-reflective and to share that information with the interviewer. Some people can't answer these questions very well, whether it's that they're just not comfortable you know, sharing a weakness uh, or they're, they're just not comfortable you know, talking about themselves. But very quickly, 
either an applicant can shine in these kinds of questions or not, because they're really not giving us what we're looking for, for that ability to, to as I've said, reflect honestly about their own strengths, their own weaknesses, what motivates them, and to share that with the interviewers. With the behavioral, I'm sorry, the situational uh, question, which was our second question, in which I had asked you, if you were the Surgeon General, what would you do? What the appropriate response is to really talk about the call of the question, what is it asking you to reflect upon? What is it asking you to do? And share with the interviewer those things that you think you would do, why you would do them, and what your expected outcome would be. So to share your reasoning looking forward, as opposed to a retrospective, which is the behavioral question. And the behavioral question is asking you to reflect upon a time when you've had a certain type of experience, factually tell what happened, but then spend most of your time talking about what did you learn? How did you grow? If you applied that knowledge in a subsequent interaction, a subsequent experience, share that. And if it's appropriate to go on to say, why do you think that's important? You know, why, um, why is this skill, this knowledge, this new perspective, how is that going to make you a better medical student and a better doctor? Mm -hmm. It's not always going to work that you can tie it together, but if it does, you certainly want to look for that opportunity to, to share that information as well. I think you did a great job on all of the questions, and I hope that this has been helpful to, to our audience to understand why medical schools might ask a certain type of question. I imagine you got all three of these when you were interviewing for medical school. Yeah, definitely similar questions. Um, and actually, as you were asking the, the behavioral question, right, what is my biggest weakness? Um, I think I, you know, I kind of feel the weakest about answering those types of questions. I definitely remember leaving my own interviews um, and thinking, oh, shoot, you know, like I could have done that so much better. Um, so, yeah, th those are definitely, I think, challenging, especially because we're not so used to talking about ourselves like that. You're right. It, it can be. I, I used to get questions, particularly about this, what is your greatest weakness question? I would get questions of, am I really supposed to tell them my greatest weakness? And it was, it always left me with a pause going, well, since I don't know what it is, you know, maybe, you know, not. But certainly, if you get that question, you, the audience, get that question in an interview, think about ways in which um, you can then say, here's what I've done to try to improve upon this weakness. Here are people I've talked to or books I've read, you know, ways in which I'm trying to improve. And why do I think that's, it's important for me to improve this weakness? You know, that gives you an opportunity not just to be focusing on which, which you might think of as negative and instead turn it into a positive and talk about those positive aspects. So if you have any questions, after having listened to our discussion today, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below and we'll be sure to get back to them. Or if you need help with your application, no matter where you are in the process, just reach out, we're here to help. Thank you.